I have been working to build my own production company from scratch and just recently worked one of my very first events as my production company with some of my new equipment that I purchased over the last couple of months. I did a concert for a middle school Christmas program this past weekend and I wanted to share with you some of the things that I learned from that gig and hopefully give you guys some ideas based on that. I figured this is a tech YouTube channel primarily and you might find some of this interesting in your own endeavors if you're looking at getting into the audio and lighting world as I am as a creator myself. So I figured I would go over some of the things that found interesting at it, kind of give you a walk through the setup that I was working with and then open up the, the comment section below to discuss what you guys think of the event. So it's about to get dark outside. I figured I'd just turn on the generator. We'll take a quick look at what we've got going on out here, what we got some daylight to see it, and then we'll check it out again at night. Um, but we've got all of our choir mics just set up out here to pick up the kids. Obviously, there's just some 58s. There's some sure 58s. And then we've got the whole stage up here. We've got our monitor right there. Um, up here at the back side, we have four Chauvet Intimidator 260 spots. And in the front, we have four ETC Source 4s. And then we'll head on down to the front over here and we'll just check it out. We've got a couple of speakers that we are using out here. These are just um, some generic front of house speakers that we're gonna use. And then back this way, we actually have the remainder of our rig. We've got an X32 Compact that I'm using for the actual mix of the show. And then I'm using a software on a laptop called LightKey to control all of the lighting. So let's fire up the lighting and see how it looks. Got these homing right now and they are getting ready to go. Then I've got a hazer that I'm trying to get to look good out here. So I'm waiting till it gets dark to try to finesse my hazer placement. We've got that beautiful golden hour lighting right now, but this is my hazer line. So we're just gonna hook in our hazer over here and that should get that heating up so that we can test it out. So we've got our lights on. Uh, there's a little bit of work yet that needs to be done up here, but you'll see they are looking good, except for this one that's off a little bit. But otherwise, we're looking all right, uh, nice and bright. Just out here working on the lighting looks. This looks great. One of my favorite looks. Been planning this one for a bit. Um, loving the way that's turning out with the gobos in the haze, with the solo and everything. It's gonna look mm, juicy. One of the first things that I found challenging working this event was getting my layer of haze to look good outside. It was incredibly challenging because we had about a four to six mile per hour wind. So when the event started around 5.30 and parents started coming and sitting down outside at the venue, we were running foggers and hazers at full blast. And then it turns out we weren't able to dial it back enough. And as the event continued going on, there was way more fog than I had initially anticipated on. So personally, I think that that is a challenge that I faced on this that I've never faced before. I've worked with hazers plenty of times, but I've never had to make it look good outside. It was really tricky trying to finesse the placement of those hazers to make things look good outside with wind shear coming from different directions and make it all come out looking like a typical indoor theatrical haze scenario would. So again, having worked with hazers, I figured it would be pretty simple. I would catch it in the pavilion peak and then it would trickle down into the lights. Another thing that was interesting about this event is it's the first time that I have done all of my lighting and audio production off of a generator. So I had two 15 amp circuits to work with and that is very, very small amounts of power if you're working with stuff. So the first and foremost thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure that as you're plugging things in that you have done the math in advance so that you don't trip a breaker. For me, I had done all of the math in advance and had a good idea of how much power draw I was going to use. I had four Source 4s mounted as front lighting and they worked really, really well. They were 500 watt lamps in each one of them. The only problem with that is if all four lights were turned on to 100% at the same time, it would actually blow the breaker and you'd have to go reset the breaker. 
That is not what actually ended up being the problem for me. What ended up being the problem for me is that there was a Christmas tree set up in the back by the concession stand area that they had put up, and we plugged in that Christmas tree, not taking into consideration all of the things that were already on that circuit. That entire circuit was powering the X32 Compact, that circuit was also powering a couple of hazers, one hazer, one fog machine. It was com also supplying the power to the front of house PA. So I had two point source sound speakers facing out into the audience, as well as one on the stage that was acting as a monitor for the kids to be able to hear the track and some of the other stuff that was going on in the program. So my recommendation to you would be, if you're not sure, make sure that everybody is very aware of the amount of power draw. Fire everything on in advance when you get there and make sure that you are not going to trip a breaker with your equipment. And then definitely make sure that anybody working the event also knows of the power constraints so that they're not plugging things in and exceeding the limits. So that's something that I had to work through. And fortunately we did uh, have a moment where the breaker got tripped, but we were able to get the show back up and running in under three minutes because everybody was on high alert for something like that to happen. And the crew was already standing by and we were able to run over and start the program over again. We were about 30 seconds into the first song, which made it really easy to go back to the top of the show and run the program from start without having any awkward issues. If you were interested in any of the equipment that I shared in this video, I find that a lot of technology across the board from consumer tech like cell phone reviews and stuff all the way up to this to be very interesting. So if you found any of this interesting and you'd like more in-depth information on the audio console and how it operates or the lighting software that I use to control the event, let me know because I'd be more than happy to make more videos discussing how this operation all went down. I thought it was very fun and hopefully you did too. I will catch you in the next one and thanks for watching. It's been real.